Club members, another exciting topic for you this month. Another amazing set of champagnes. We love choosing the wines for the Club Kiri. Yep. We're looking at Mono Cru yes. this month. So Mono Cru is the essentially coming from one village. Mm -hmm. And this month we're looking at two producers. The first one is Mouzon Larue coming from the Grand Cru village of Verzi. Super cool producer. And then we've got Etienne Calsac who's got three different vineyard holdings, but one of them that we're looking at is actually from Bissoy, which is a premier crew uh, in the Valle de la Mar. Now, most of you will have had a mono crew before, but maybe you didn't know it. And of course, it is really closely linked to a small grower producer, mono meaning one, crew meaning village. We're looking at a real sense of terroir and a real sense of place in the wines this month. Super excited about the first producer that we're introducing to all of our club members this month, mm -hmm. Mouzon Leroux, located in the Grand Cru village of Verzi. A house that was founded in 1776, Curie. So, yeah. very, very long history of viticulture. They have, you know, if you yep. think the first commercial winery in Champagne was 1729, they're hot on their tail. I suspect that the family would have been making wine for many, many years before they turned their hand to Champagne, and boy, they've done a good job. Absolutely. In fact, uh, Mama and Papa, which is uh, Philippe and Pascal, uh, used to work at uh, the very big, famous house of Verve Clicquot. And, um, and, but in the meantime, still farming their uh, one hectare site in Verzi, but they also have some contracts for uh, the nine other hectares. So they've got some really good background in winemaking and um, also viticulture. But I'm sure what they're doing in their own vineyard is vastly different to what they're doing at Berkeley Co because we're talking organic. Yep. We're talking biodynamic since 2008 and taking that to the next step. I love this. They're doing agro forestry within their vineyards. So this is very exciting. I think this is super yeah. cool. So what they're doing is they're not just planting the vines and tending to the vines. They're planting shrubs, they're planting trees, they're planting other fruit plants within their vineyards to encourage biodiversity within yeah. the vineyards. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. And once they pick the plants, winter has come. They've got sheep in the vineyards, they've got chicken in the vineyards, you've got some natural fertilization, you've got natural lawn mowers mowing through the vines. Yep. This is super cool. And this is, this is what it's about. Ultimately, um, having a vineyard is not just about a monoculture, it's a bioculture with many different things happening uh, at the same time to encourage that health and diversity. So that's what they've done here and, and it looks good. You can see it. Yeah. All the club members are receiving this month is Latavik from the house of Mouzon Leroux. 70% mm -hmm. Pinot Noir, 30% Chardonnay, extra brute, Kiri, two grams. Yeah. You know, very lean, but there's still a lot of texture and a lot of body in the wine. Absolutely. And uh, you can see it when you when you have the wine, it is incredibly dry, but there's a, so much uh, of of that terroir coming through, really, really showing its area. Verzi is, of course, uh, facing north, so it's a cooler uh, site. Uh, as, as all fruit comes from that area, Verzenay next door as well. Um, so yeah, you really get that sort of mineral style coming across. But you know, we put our nose in the glass and we were getting just an abundance of red fruit, but more on that blueberry, cherry, and also a slight herbal note, you know? And for me, I was picking up this sort of um, hint of licorice, which yeah. is really quite warming and almost, quite rich. Almost salty as well, which I quite like. Saline. saline. Yeah. So I was thinking that I'd partner this with something that was gamey, but where were you thinking? What would you do? I was going along the lines of, um, you know, Coquille Saint-Jacques, or as we uh, say in Australia, um, scallops. scallops. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, everything sounds sexier in and French. And actually, yeah. uh, daikon or radish has this really nice earthy flavour which would work well with it. And some of that citrus, lime, yuzu, anything like that would work. I know it sounds a bit fancy, but those are the flavours that come to me when I'm thinking about this, this kind of wine. Next up is Etienne Kalsak, and uh, he'll be destined for all of our connoisseurs out there. Uh, really lovely guy. He, he started uh, with his family vineyard in 2010. Mm. and uh, 26 years of age. And he's only at only 26 years mm. of age, absolutely. So he's been doing it now for 10 years. He's done so much in yeah. that time. We featured him in the club before because, well, we, we, like we his love wine. his contemporary style of champagne. So um, uh, the wine we're going to be looking at is his La Rochefort, which is a single vineyard. So we've got vineyards that are small parcels. Mm -hmm. House is located in Avis, so in the in the heart of the Chardonnay land. Yep. Um, he loves working with the Chardonnay 
grape. He's got a tiny 2.8 hectares of wines, but he really loves his single vineyard expression and that's what we're gonna focus on in this month. You got it. Okay, so the Monocru in this particular uh, wine that we're looking at, which is the Rochefort, is Bissoy. Bissoy is insanely chalky if you're looking at it. It's 30 uh, centimeters below uh, the, the topsoil is, is chalk. So there's plenty of this really uh, chalky definition on the palate, and it's tempered by a little bit of that oak. Yeah, so you know, when you're putting wine into an oak barrel, the wine is breathing through the timber, it's interacting with the fibres of the wood, and it really is rounding the wine out, you know. And Kiri and I kind of differ on this wine. Mm. I don't see the, the Chardonnay in this wine being perfectly linear or a tight line of acid that runs through the palate. I see it as being a bit softer, a bit rounder, but we normally expect to see some pretty tight, pretty taut Chardonnay coming out of Bissoy. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I love its chalkiness. I love that pure mineral dimension. And, and you can see some push-pull on the tongue, which is good for me. Definitely a food wine. Uh, so, you know. so Blanc de Blanc, 100% Chardonnay, yep. um, three grams of sugar, so super dry, a little bit of barrel. Uh, I see a little bit more roundness, some almonds, some, you know, some, some round yellow fruit on mm -hmm. this wine. Mm -hmm. What are we pairing with? I'm seeing fish for this dish. Okay. Well, what, where would you go? What kind of fish? Mm, I don't know. A little John Any Dory? Kind of, yeah, a little, little, bit of <laughs> 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 little bit of John Dory, maybe a lemon butter sauce, and that would be heaven for yeah. me on this wine. Sounds good. Enjoy the wines for this month. We've mm. looked at the idea of Mono Cru single village, and then for our connoisseurs, drill down a little bit tighter on what we call Ludi single parcel within a single village. Now, this whole idea of Mono Cru and the conversation really started to come up about 10 to 15 years ago. Wine critics, wine connoisseurs, wine lovers were seeking out Mono Cru because it was a sense of expression, Kiri. Yeah. And it wasn't about this blending across the region because if you're looking for a sense of expression, you're looking to see the skill of the winemaker and the talent of the viticulture. For sure, very much like uh, what Burgundy have been doing for, for mm, hundreds of reference. years. And I think that the, the Champenois have come a, around to that expression in these different areas. So you might find it that it is slightly one dimensional, yeah. uh, but that's, that's okay because you're seeing something for the first time in its true expression. Bigger houses or other houses, some of my favorites like Charles Heidsick has like 60 different villages that goes on to hit into their wines. Mm. Uh, Laurent Perrier, a hundred that goes into their Lacuve. So you're seeing so many different wines. You don't really get any one expression, whereas this is. Yeah, you're, you're seeing the true personality of the wines. We've seen it in Etienne Calsac. Mm. We've seen it in Mouzon La Rue. We hope you enjoy the wines for this month. We'll see you next month at the Emperor Champagne Club.